Jimbo, good morning. Uh, condolences for the loss of, of Bobby Bowden. And I think the, the, the way, the best way to begin the conversation with you is to ask you what's the, your best memory of the first time you met him. You know, the first time I ever met him, um, my memories, I coached with him. I was, you know, I was with Terry and Jeff. Sometimes we would go down to watch Florida State practice. I would stay at his house. I mean, things like that. But I remember the first time I ever really got to sit down and talk to him because I played for Terry at the time I was in college. And just the genuineness of how he treated you, what he did, the way he made you feel like in the first two minutes that he talked to you was unbelievable. But then you're in awe. I'm in awe because I'm, I'm talking to Bobby Bowden and what he did offensively. And we ran, when I played, we ran the exact offense. I mean, called it exactly the same thing because Terry ran it and those things. It was an amazing deal. But my best memories come from some of the best ones anyway, when he, we had the, they, you know, they have the Manning passing Academy now, mm -hmm. you know, with the high school kids mm -hmm. that actually came from the Bowden Academy. The Bowdens were the first one to ever do that in the late eighties. We had all receivers and quarterbacks from all over the country. Matter of fact, Peyton was in it. I was a senior counselor that we did. And, 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 and that group and just at night sitting around after everybody went back, he'd be in the dorm, set, go back in the, in, in the rooms with us with the coaches and all the coaches and the counselors, he put his feet up, take his socks off, put his feet up on, on the table and tell stories about guys he recruited, old high school stories. But then all of a sudden the game knowledge, people start asking questions. And the ability for me as a young guy to sit and absorb all the things, it's almost like, you know, when you're, if your dad's a coach and you follow him around, you don't realize what you absorb until you get older and you start applying those things because you hear him and see him every day. And I would just listen to the stories. And at such a young age, I was um, it was unbelievable the knowledge I kept retaining and going back to when I started coaching. And I remember the first time I became an offense coordinator, I was 24 at Stanford, and I was going into the 91 season. They were preseason number one. Well, in the 90 year, they had a great season. And I remember Terry took me to the bowl game, and I sat in every one of Bobby's meetings just in the back against the wall and watched him organize his staff. And then the offensive meetings, how he structured it, and then how he got the game plan together. And I got to sit in the box and listen to him call the game on a headset where, where there was no uh, – I couldn't talk. I would just listen to him and learning. And so many things you learn and just how he was as a coach, but then how genuine and, and how he was as a person. I mean, it, it, was, it was a mark. When I say this, I don't think there's a better coach and gentleman that's ever coached the game of football. And I don't mean that in any slight to anybody else. I just think that much of him. Coach, coach Fisher, what was the conversation like when you joined Florida State staff and you became the uh, head coach in waiting – it, you know what was funny when he when he was they were recruiting me to leave when I left LSU to come back over, and Bobby and I met together and we talked, and see it was not like a normal job interview. It was almost like your dad come to get you and said, "Hey, you need, why don't you come back over here?" <laughs> you know what I mean? He'd go over here and come on because I, I mean it really was because I felt so comfortable. We had, the conversation we had was unbelievable. I mean, it was about ball, but it was about the future, what we did. But here's the thing: that was a never a guarantee. Everybody assumed that was a thing that was that wasn't done until I got to Florida State that was not a thing that was ever spoke, spoken of or said to me on the way over there now by my Bob I guess maybe they had plans for that later on but that was never there and and that was it was an opportunity in which and I say that at the time I had seven job opportunities at that time here's what I saw as a man and I knew before I had to be a head coach there were some things about coach Bowden I, I, I was around him to death but I never coached with him on a staff I knew I wanted to get that those years of experience that I had a bunch of job opportunities to be coordinators, even some NFL jobs, head coaching jobs in college. I knew I wanted to get a couple years under him just to how he actually did it on a day to day basis where I could see it even better and to be a head coach. And it was like, hey, hey come on, buddy, let's go back home where we always started because I was always a Florida State. I, I grew up on the, in that family. I grew up. Uh, going, loving Florida State, I, uh, you know, as a kid and being around it and playing, I just became a Florida State fan. And him coming over and tapping, and I had seven job opportunities. And I always say this, and it was by far the it was the least job opportunity I ever took. My money wise, it was probably three hundred thousand dollars less than any job I had offered to me at mm -hmm. the present time. And I went, and I always tell kids this, and I always tell young coaches this. Don't ever take – I mean, you know, we make the money, we make tons of money. But when you you got to be ready for the jobs you got. And there was another piece of that puzzle I had to have. And Bobby Bowden was the piece that I had to finalize to learn how to be a great head coach. And I wanted that piece. And money wasn't a part of it. It was about the people you were around. And that's where I was so fortunate as a young guy to be around Bobby, be around Terry, be around Jeff, be around Tommy, and that whole family. 
to teach me how to coach and and to, and to put the things and how I wanted to do things and how they did things that I that, and that's how I still do them. What what type of pressure did you feel taking over Florida State for Coach Bowden when you knew okay I'm getting ready to get this job? Big shoes to fill. Well, you knew you listen the legacy of what you had and what the expectations were for him being there. I mean, 34 straight bowl games. I mean, they went 14 years in the top five. No one had ever done that. 14, 10 win seasons in a row, and that's when you're only playing 12 games with a bowl game. I mean, no one had ever done that. And so the expectations were high. The pressure was high. But like Coach Bowden said, and, and I always remember him saying this, hey, buddy, if, 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 you, if you're doing things the right way, pressure's not a problem. It's never a problem for you because if you, you believe in yourself, and he always said that you got to believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, and be able to get it to your people, and don't worry about the, don't worry about the outcomes and the results. And it you know it'll it'll work out. God has a way of working it out. And he always used God in everything he ever did, and he was right. Jimbo Fisher joining us right now on the Goodyear Hotline, a Texas A&M head coach. As we talk about the life and the legacy of, of Bobby Bowden, who passed away Sunday at the age of 91. So you take over as head coach. You go on to win a national championship at Florida State in 2013. Mm-hmm. What was the conversation like that you had with him when you were heading to that championship game and then after you won that title? Hey, oh, hey, hey. Bobby was a guy who delegated authority. He was a guy who, if he gave you a job and, he, you know, he'd give you some peace and he saw something there, he adjusted it and made it. He, but he let you do your job. And he always say, hey, you've done a great job. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody try to talk. And he said, don't, don't do anything different. Do what you do and do what you do well and don't worry about it. And, you know, it's funny because, Everybody always said, Bobby always told me, he said this back in the 80s. He said, no, I understand something. When you take this job, I'm not going to come around for a while. And I, I said, I understand. Because he had said this to me. I heard him say it back when I was when I was in those conversations in the 80s and 90s. He said, because when I get done, it's not right for the other head coach to come around. So everybody be asking questions. And the greatest thing, one of the reasons we had so much success, and, and, and I had constant conversations with him on the phone. We would call, and we always used to go sit in his office and have conversations. And Clint Purvis, our team chaplain, used to hear some of our conversations. Sometimes it was amazing. He would just give me wisdom. You know, we'd just sit and have an hour-long conversation, sometimes two-hour-long conversations. He had an unbelievable memory in history of the game. His memory was unbelievable. Even in, in late age, it was, it was crazy. But, you know, he, he said, because I, I don't want everybody saying, well, Bobby didn't do it that way. So we would have tons of conversations privately. I have a call just like we had one month before he got sick and then and talked after. But he said, but, you know, because I want you to be able to do it your way. It's unfair for old coaches to hang around and everybody's saying, well, that ain't the way that's done. That ain't the, He said, you got to do it your way. And that's what he told me going to that national championship. He said, hey, you've done it perfectly all year. Don't change a thing. He said, do it your way. Do what you believe. Trust, you know, trust yourself and go. And that's what he always was. He delegated it and he trusted people. And he, and he, went, and he always gave you, he got a way of talking to you that gave you supreme confidence in yourself. Mm. Head coach Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M head coach, that is, in national championship in 2013 for the Florida State Seminoles, are joining us this morning on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Coach, you you coached under two Bowdens, obviously uh, Bobby at Florida State and Terry at Sa- Sanford a- along with Auburn. How proud was was Coach Bowden of his two sons to be able to coach in Division oh. I football? I mean, unbelievable that they all fought. And Tommy, too. And Tommy, you know, Tommy was a head coach and did a great job. And Tommy's with us at Auburn. I mean, they, they lived, eat, and breathe football. I mean, they really did. I mean, they talked constantly. I mean, it would be on the phone. Bobby, if Bobby saw something and he didn't say, they'd be on the phone to each other. And, 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 and Terry called now Terry called Bobby. Now, he had a heck of a resource. They'd call him, and Bobby would get the, he would get the answers immediately. They talked constantly. That's why they did the Bowden Academy, that passing academy, and they would sit there. They were going for two weeks. They would sit there every night at night just – throwing and catching balls all day and then talking ball all night. I mean, Bobby was extremely proud of his kids, and his kids were highly successful in what he did. Terry was under – I mean, Terry – remember, we, Terry won 20 games in a row at Auburn, yeah. first 20 games in a row. It was unbelievable. Tommy had tremendous success at Tulane and, and, and uh, uh, Clemson. And then Jeff was a tremendous assistant. As always with him and Terry were always together. Like I say, they were always on staff with me. He was my offense coordinator when I played, and Terry was the head coach and called the plays. And uh, I mean, but and Bobby, every if Bobby had an off weekend, and they, one of those guys was playing. He was sitting in the stands at the game. And I'm gonna tell you, when you're sitting there as a young coach, and all of a sudden Bobby comes in your off under staff meeting or something, here when he was coming up here to visit and what's going on, he never tried to get in the way, but just him walking around, the presence of it was amazing. But every off weekend, I remember him coming to our games all the time. 